Hey Busy Bees, it's Zong, and today we are starting Cookbook Cook Along. I was super inspired by the movie Julie and Julia. We rewatched it again recently, and I thought we should do a Zong and someone, so I thought it would be super fun to start with Chrissy Teigen. I'm gonna be choosing a recipe from her new cookbook, Cravings Hungry for More, and we're just gonna be cooking along with the book. I've never tried any of the recipes in here before because it's a fairly new cookbook. So, let's see here. We are gonna be making her Thai soy garlic fried ribs. Doesn't that sound delicious? I've actually seen um, a few articles written about this specific recipe, so I thought, hey, let's give it a try because it looks delicious and it seems pretty easy too. If you guys are a fan of Chrissy Teigen, be sure to give this video a like. I mean, right? And don't forget to subscribe for more fun videos like this cook along, what's it called? Like this cook along cookbook series. It's new, so, I'm trying to get used to it. Now, I always think Chrissy Teigen is such a character. She's like super cheeky, funny, very honest, which I appreciate, but for a while, I wasn't really sure what to think of her because she was just so like polarizing, but I did get to see her speak in LA um, at the Create and Cultivate conference, and I just felt like she was actually really down to earth in person. I liked a lot what she had to say, and you know, I, really like her recipes too. I have her first cookbook, um, but the head notes, I always have that laugh out loud moment. For example, this recipe that we're also gonna be making, Pepper's Red Hot Pepper Sauce. Yes, this was in my first book. It didn't stop being delicious. <laughs> like she's so cheeky. There was another one that made me laugh really hard. What was it? Oh. For example, there's this other one, the sweet soy glazed pork chop, fat. There is a coyote roaming around the hills behind our house. Fact, every time we use our grill pan, we set off the alarm system, and the best way to get that sucker to chill is to slide open the back door. So making these sweet, juicy, done before you blinked pork chops sets off a debate every time. Are they worth the possibility of a wild dog hanging out in our living room? If you factor in the soy, if you factor in the butter soy veg and how quickly the whole dinner comes together, I think the answer is yes. Maybe we'll just make our coyote a plate and leave it by the back door. He's our coyote now. I don't know, she's so cheeky and funny. She also goes on about like parsley in this one, how much she hates it and stuff like that, but it's like endearing kind of funny. Anyways, I really enjoyed this cookbook. This is not a sponsored post at all. I just think I like I have a huge cookbook collection, so I think it's fun to share recipes from other great chefs and cooks uh, with you guys. And also, if you guys wanna cook along, it's accessible, right? All right, so let's get started with our Thai soy garlic fried ribs, or rather Chrissy's Thai soy garlic fried ribs. So I'm just gonna work on marinating the ribs first. Um, so I just have the ingredients for that. Now her recipe calls for one rack of baby back ribs. And to be honest, I'm not a fan of baby back ribs because they're too fatty and I much prefer spare ribs. But also Costco sells a really nice cut of spare ribs for much cheaper than anything that you would buy at like grocery stores, like regular ones. You get, what, three rack of ribs here for only $27. I went to Whole Foods once and I got one rack of ribs, I think for like 20 bucks. So this is such a great deal. I'm just gonna use one because that's all the um, recipe calls for. So let me open this up and prepare next. So we have our rack of ribs and it says, to separate it into individual ribs. Now there's gonna be about 12 to 14. So actually, I think it's easier for me to cut where I can see the bone, right here. And I'm just gonna cut it in the middle of each bone. Add them to my dish. Look how much meat is on this guy. So with spare ribs, if you notice, you also get a little bit of this extra rib right here with a very, very tender like bone. So if you want to, you can cut it off and have extra baby spare ribs. 
Now we add two tablespoons of soy sauce, seven cloves of minced garlic. This is gonna be garlicky. And one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. That looks about good. And then it says toss to coat. Now I do wanna mention that she says to put it in a large bowl, but I decided to put it in a shallow pan like this, just so the sauce and the ribs can distribute evenly. It smells so good. The garlic, oh, fresh garlic. It smells just so savory. The ingredients are so simple. We're also gonna be making her mom's hot pepper sauce to glaze this later too, so this is gonna be packed with flavor. Okay, and then it says let stand at room temperature, but she doesn't say for how long, so I think I'm gonna let it sit for maybe half an hour, but in the meantime, we're gonna be making Pepper's hot pepper sauce. So she calls for two tablespoons of toasted Thai red chili powder, which I don't have. And also I can't take like Thai spicy heat, like Thai chili peppers. They're too spicy for me. So I'm just using like regular red chili pepper flakes that I ground down into a powder. And instead of two tablespoons, I'm just using one teaspoon. Two tablespoons of hot water, two tablespoons of fish sauce, one tablespoon of toasted rice powder. All you have to do is kind of toast jasmine rice on a skillet on medium low heat for maybe five to 10 minutes until it's nice and golden brown like this. Honestly, I haven't had toasted rice powder since I was a kid. My dad used to use this to make, um, what's that dish called? The broken rice with the shredded pork, gom tham, and I haven't had toasted rice powder since that. So this brings back a lot of memories for me. It's a cool way to use this ingredient that I grew up with. So now I'm gonna add the toasted rice grains into my mortar and pestle, and I'm gonna grind it down into a powder. So it turned into this fine white powder, and we just need a tablespoon of it. Squeeze in the pulp of 10 grape or cherry tomatoes, which I don't have, so I'm using a really ripe heirloom tomato, which has a lot of flavor, so I think it's a great substitute. We'll squeeze the pulp in and discard the skin. I'm just gonna break the tomato pieces with my hand, break it up so we don't get large chunks in there. Stir together, and that's it. Let's give it a quick taste test. Interesting. So I get a lot of the fish sauce, ooh, and then the spiciness kinda goes in back of your throat after a second. This is gonna be good. But I don't taste a ton of the toasted rice powder. I wonder if it helps to thicken up the sauce or just makes it a little bit more savory and interesting. We'll let it kinda soak through and melt together while we now cook up our ribs. So now we're gonna heat oil in a large heavy pot over medium high heat. This is a pretty good heavy pot that I have, um, but if you have a Dutch oven, that would work too. Okay, heat it to 370 degrees, and then working in batches of four or five, fry the ribs until just cooked and well browned, three to four minutes. Then we bring the oil back to 370 degrees, working in batches again and skimming out the bits of stray garlic so that it doesn't burn in the oil, making everything taste like burnt garlic. So our beautiful ribs are done. They're nice and golden brown. They smell incredible. So per the photo in the book, I'm gonna use the sauce as kind of like a glaze. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit over each one. This looks so good, Chrissy. Okay, moment of truth. Mm -mm. 
I got some rib sauce on my mouth. But that was so delicious. I don't normally deep fry at home, so that was a little bit of a departure from my normal um, everyday cooking. But if you guys wanna take a healthier approach to this recipe, I'm sure like an air fryer would work. I don't personally have one, but if you do try it with an air fryer, let me know. I think I would also try baking it or even cooking it in my meal fee to make it cook faster using a different vessel. But regardless, the flavors are so savory, garlicky, and I think definitely letting the toasted rice powder sit a little bit in the sauce really added a lot of depth. I'm still tasting the garlic in my mouth, which is amazing. But Chrissy, if you ever see this video, I hope you like it. I hope I did your recipe justice. But for you busy bees, what do you think of this new cookbook cook-along series. I think my next book that I'm gonna cook with will be with my girl Aisha Curry. I love her, I love, love, love her. Go Warriors. Comment below and let me know what your favorite cookbook is and what cookbook you'd like to see me cook along, whether it's old or new, uh, any kind of different cuisines. That would be so much fun because now we get to share and experience this together. If you guys have been watching this far along, uh, our secret emoji of the day will be, ooh, a chili pepper for Chrissy's mom, pepper tie too, hello. Um, I will see you guys next time, bye.